Well, good morning. You're back here with Barry. Um, here we are, April 30th and uh, day 48 in America of the lockdown, and I believe it would be yeah, day 42 in the DR. Uh, briefly, before we get into this, um, over the next little while, I can already tell uh, things will be opening up and all because companies uh, like we had packages in the capital and things and DHL and people like that, UPS, are starting to email us uh, asking about um, things are expected to open up, uh, you know, a little bit uh, sooner than thought. Anyway, so uh, before we get into it, just wanted to mention that. I imagine you're going to start seeing things opening up uh, fairly soon. But yet another uh, person, uh, another nurse uh, out in the field, uh, again, once again, ground zero. I hate that term, but uh, out in New York. You know, everything has got to have some kind of military or some kind of warlike ground zero or we're on the front lines or boy, if people been conditioned they don't even see it every every other term they use is a warlike term you know but anyway I, I i honestly question if it's even savable anymore at times it's a bit depressing but i am so glad uh we live out in the country because we haven't been experiencing anything like that yeah if we go into town or into big city we have to wear a mask to get into a grocery or to the bank or something but um as far as us out in the country, um, it, it really hasn't been too tough. And I guess I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm a bit joking when I say this. I guess I'm one of the lucky few because, um, you know, five, six weeks together with my wife, it really isn't any change for us, you know, other than carrying a couple of masks in the Jeep or the car if we go around uh, that just so we can get in. Other than that, we really haven't noticed much of a difference. So it's reassuring knowing uh, we're far better off out here in the sparsely populated area surrounded by food. Um, what else can I tell you? Uh, we're starting to hear back again from the folks that had to cancel and wanting to reschedule because I guess they're getting a bit of the same information. Real soon, the mentors will be moving on. I can already tell you within the next couple of weeks, things will be opening up quite uh, quite a bit more. Um, you'll have delays, this, that, the other, but it's all propaganda news. That it's going to be opening up. Uh, if not, you're going to start to see see um, some strong revolution, I'll tell you. It's going to be the people that want to uh, open up versus the ones that don't. It's going to be the people that have understood things like uh, Sweden without a lockdown. There's no difference in the percentages, anything to speak of compared to any other country. You're going to have those fighting, the ones that still want to be behind the masks. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more serious as time goes on, uh, but I really am going to be cautioning you about uh, just this line for now, okay? Be careful of the ones who are still wearing the masks. I don't want to get into deeper than that right now, but um, believers are a very dangerous group of people, very dangerous. Uh, First of all, believers in anything uh, is just, belief is a nice way. Look up the definition, but look it up from where it comes from, okay? Look it up from a Latin base, and you're going to basically find it comes from two words, and it's something you love, okay? You believe, it's an idea that you love very much, so you believe in it. It doesn't mean it's true. It doesn't mean it's fact. It means it's an idea that you're in love with you like it <laughs> so uh very interesting isn't it anyway i want you to listen if it's getting out that popular already with the medical field the nurses the this to that uh yeah very soon this uh this whole hoax uh, is going to be disclosed as for what it really is you're going to find out why you don't hear any more from that idiot 16 year old twit Greta, who couldn't even recite the periodic tables if she had to. Um, I uh, People putting their trust and their belief in a 16-year-old puppet. I mean, this is what we've become. So anyway, with that in mind, it's not very promising, but at least a few are brave enough to speak up. I applaud this woman, and uh, let's listen. ...least to what's happening in New York at some, some hospitals across the country, but for the most part, it seems to be New York. Uh, I'm just going to cut to the chase. They're, the medical staff is killing the patients. It's not COVID. So you have nurses, medical professionals of all kinds, afraid to speak out and tell the truth about what they're seeing in their emergency rooms, in their ICUs, all of those things. And I'm going to go into how bad it is in a second. It's, it's gut-wrenching. Um, and then you have the other 50% that are so 
terrified of COVID that they've thrown all critical thinking out the window. Basically, you go into the hospital with any type of upper respiratory issue, they immediately treat you COVID. Let's say a 35 year old man walks into the hospital, has no previous conditions, is a healthy man, just has some respiratory issues. If his oxygen drops below 90, <coughs> excuse me, 92% in, oh, with over six liters of, of oxygen, they're venting. They're venting. They're completely bypassing BiPAP, CPAP, all of it. Their justification for bypassing CPAP is that they don't want the open, open air circuit, okay? Whatever. So they're completely going away from BiPAP. They're going straight to venting. The medical community knows that venting people is typically a last ditch effort. We know that the second a person is vented, it, they're saying that over 75% of patients that are being vented are not surviving. So a 35 year old walks into the hospital, consents to being vented because they're so freaking scared of something that we now know is as deadly as the flu that they're letting them vent them and put them into a medically induced coma or just give them sedatives. This is how they're treating patients in these hospitals. They are not giving hydroxychloroquine. They actually laughed when they were asked about it. They are not giving uh, z -packs. They're not giving anything that we are seeing working all around the world. They have everybody on that is COVID, COVID and non-confirmed COVID, like that both and these people are together. They're in rooms together. They are giving them broad spectrum antibiotics and sedatives and venting them and then leaving them to die. A direct quote from one of the charge nurses, when somebody had a fever of 104 was, oh, we're not gonna medicate him, he's dying. Excuse me? I'm sorry, what? You're not even gonna try? They're being told to not perform any life saving no CPR no nothing that is going to be basically like you signed a DNR they're not doing the rapid tests that are giving you results in 45 minutes they are using the ones that they have to send into the labs and again when asked why and how long those results take they laughed and said five days if we're lucky so what they're doing is they have COVID patients that are confirmed COVID and then they have rule out COVID they're ruling everything else out and assuming they're COVID, rule out COVID. They're putting them in rooms together. These nurses are in the same protective equipment all day long. The only thing that changes is their gloves. If you know anything about cross-contamination or any of that, even the slightest bit, you know how bad that is. If you are a nurse, if you are a CNA, if you are any of those things, you know that that is an ex it's completely ridiculous to be venting somebody. These people are speaking in full sentences, full sentences. They're alert, they're talking. They're just having some upper respiratory issues. You think that everybody's dying because of this COVID when really it's the vents that are killing people. The problem is the oxygen level in the blood, okay? That's the problem. This is not every doctor that is thinking critically and blowing the whistle is coming out and saying this is not ARD. This is not what we're used to seeing, okay? Usually when people are that severe, they can't speak to you. They are in distress, they can't breathe. These people are speaking sentences. These people are alert. They are not, it's not like they are struggling. The trucks outside with the bodies are real. They're very much real. Okay, first of all, if you guys were that concerned about COVID, why do you have a bunch of bodies that are infected with COVID just sitting in a truck outside? So it seems like this is political and that this is about money because they get a lot of money for every COVID patient. 
and they don't even have to test. A lot of them are not even testing. They are a rule out COVID, so now they can claim that they're a COVID patient. No autopsies are happening. Perfect scenario, they can't have guests there, so guess what? You don't have an advocate, you don't have a family member there with you, you don't have anybody to say, wait a second, something's wrong here. Like, if this is that bad, why are you not, why are you in the same protective gear? Why are you not giving my spouse what we know works? Doctors are saying when they use the z pack and hydroxychloroquine that they're seeing their patients recover in a matter of 48 hours, 72 hours, complete, like, just completely better. People are dying and they are leaving them on hospital beds for hours, hours with a patient in the same room. The charting is horrible, horrible, okay? Horrible charting. They're barely charting anything. If somebody codes, they're not responding. If your loved one codes, they are not responding. The drips are being put outside the hospital room. If you've ever been in a hospital for any situation, you know your drip is right there. The drip is being put all the way outside the door. How, how are your nurses supposed to properly assess you if your drips are all the way outside the door? They're not even going in there at all. There are hundreds of nurses sitting in New York hotels on FEMA's dime that are not being used. While the hospitals are saying we are slammed, and some of them are, the nurses are freaking exhausted because they're venting everybody and killing everybody without even realizing they're doing it. And I can't imagine looking back 10, 20 years from now when everybody sees the truth and thinking, oh my God, I was a nurse, I was involved in that, and I thought I was helping people. It seems like this is happening in New York in the lower income hospitals. They're getting a lot of money for every patient that is COVID. They don't have to test them to prove they're COVID. They're getting even more money for everybody they're putting on vents. This is about money, and it seems like this is about politics. Like they want to make the numbers look high. Um, they want to make Trump look bad. I, I just cannot believe that this is happening in 2020. So I have a question in closing here. Uh, there's no question uh, the woman's correct and it is political. Uh, there's no question it is about money. Again, uh, we've discussed that. It seems to be the God uh, we all, all believe in to a degree. However, I want to ask you a question, especially my subscribers with children, because uh, the ones that sit and believe and go to all these belief establishments on the weekend and everything, which they don't do now, so it kind of tells you which avatar they believe in stronger, the one that they claim they're going to or the one that is right now. And obviously they don't go to church because some human being said the doors stay closed and they'll listen to the human being instead of worshiping the particular avatar they choose. That's how mixed up people are. But I want to ask everybody a universal question, especially my viewers with children and grandchildren. The dear woman makes an excellent point, and I've asked this question before in an interview. Uh, to a very prominent author, uh, James Wesley Rolls, and uh, he's a survival blog. Uh, he owns that uh, website, the biggest in the world about survival, and we had uh, several talks. And uh, my final question to him was the same one I'm going to bring up now because he just got floored. I said, what are you going to tell your grandchildren? What are you going to tell your children when in a decade from now they find out that all of this was a hoax? And because you didn't live up to your responsibility of doing your own research, like I'm trying to bring out to people, this is not staged. This is from real people. And you could have prevented it all, and none of this had to happen. None of it. But because of your own fear and your own particular belief, you've caused this to happen. And how are you going to answer something like that?
If this forced vaccine situation comes into being, and you all of a sudden start seeing people like the drugs having cancer in their 40s and early 50s, even late 30s, and they're your children and grandchildren. And when the truth is out, how are you going to look them in the face? I mean, I don't think I didn't know is going to cut it. So you might want to think about that as difficult as it is, because it was no easier for any of us, us, any other of us who, who started to recognize the truth. And forgive me, I'm just staring off. There's about 25, 30 cows right uh, by the fence here, and they're all uh, trying to get to the mango tree. <laughs> but anyway, we're, we're so glad we live in the country right now. And uh, anyway, you try and answer that question, because again, belief means something that you're in love with and an idea. It has nothing to do with truth. I applaud the woman. Um, over the years, when I was educated, uh, in my younger years, uh, I could see by the woman's body language, she's a very nervous person right now, but I do stress, or I do rather, I do sense by the eye movements and the, wow, amplified eyebrows, but, uh, I, I applaud the woman, but I can tell she's under tremendous stress right now. This is sincerely bothering her, but I do think by her nature, probably because our cells adapt to the surroundings that we place them in. So I imagine she's in a very fast-paced part of the, the world she lives in. But in any event, the body language expresses that. So uh, a lot of people are riding on these kind of nerves. Uh, I'm, I'm so pleased to see people starting to stand out like this. The mentors will soon be moving on because as more and more of this turns over, then the herd is always going to take the sweep and then start pointing the finger at everybody else about how could you have not known? How could you have not known? Once everybody knows, it's just how the herd reacts. Anyway, part of it is, uh, part of this makes me pleased to see people par uh, speak out. A big part of me, though, just amplifies, uh, not that it, it, it bothers me because I choose not to let it bother me. I am aware of it, though. Uh, a lot of people, they're so blatantly lost in fear that they have no idea that them selling themselves, their children, their grandchildren, their freedom and their health right down the drain, right down the drain by their own selfish fear, and they're afraid to look out of the pot. Anyway, keep boiling in it. It's old Barry.